talk a little bit today about pagan Christianity. Not too long ago, Barna wrote a book called Pagan Christianity, exposing some of the pagan origins of some of the things that we do as Christians. Well, long before there was him, there was a fellow by the name of Lou White that published this book called Fossilized Customs. If you want more information, more stuff like this, you can go to www.fossilizedcustoms.com and get more information about the uh, Nazarite movement and some of the pagan origins of Christianity. Now, I'm not saying this stuff because I'm opposed to getting back to the roots of what we really spiritually need to be getting at. But I do want to address this issue because of the fact that I've seen a lot of brothers and sisters in Christ who got information like this and went completely nuts. They became legalistic, they became judgmental, they became uh, bitter, and they separated themselves from the rest of the church. And there are some myths that, uh, that I need to address because some things just aren't quite true. And uh, they get kind of misquoted and uh, misdirected. One thing that a, a person who's very anti-paganized Christianity, uh, th they'll have a real problem with Christmas and the celebration of Christmas. Because it's, it's a pagan tradition. It's not a Christian tradition. One of the things they like to do is they, they like to bring up Jeremiah 10 and say, Read this verse carefully. It's talking about a Christmas tree. Boy, that, that really does sound like a Christmas tree. The only problem is if you read the rest of the chapter, it's actually talking about an idol. It's not talking about a Christmas tree. It's talking about the fashioning of an idol. And so it's taken out of context, but a lot of people don't care about context when it comes to this thing because it proves their point. And one of the things that you have to do if, if you're going to be a Berean, if you're really going to read the Word, you got to care about context. Context matters. Something else that a lot of the people who are against the paganization of Christianity uh, want to do is they want to worship on Saturdays because Saturday is the true Sabbath. Um, it's not Sunday, it's Saturday. And they're absolutely correct. Saturday is the Sabbath. Uh, but as a Christian, Sunday is the Lord's Day. And uh, so you can honor either one. Actually, the Word of God does not condemn you for which day you honor. I just hope that somebody does honor a day, have a day of rest and a day of worship and reflection. Um, you know, people want to make that a big contentious issue when actually it's not, uh, but they go through the scriptures. Something that's kind of interesting is the emergence of, of these views are kind of driving people back into Messianic Judaism. And, and one of the problems with that is the fact that they're abandoning faith. You know, even Jesus, in the book of John, when he confronts the Pharisees and the Sadducees, he doesn't say, my law says. He says, your law says. Wait a minute, if he is God, why isn't he saying that that's his law? And if he's the spokesperson for God, why doesn't he say that's our law? Check it out. See, one of the problems that we have is a lot of people, they don't distinguish the difference between the Mosaic law and the law of God. And a lot of people want to live under that Mosaic law. That Mosaic Law was crucified with Christ on the cross. I don't think if somebody wants to worship God on Saturday, if somebody wants to eat kosher, if somebody wants to, uh, hey, if you want to wear, uh, if you want to wear zit zits, and uh, if you want to uh, have a prayer shawl or a little beanie on the back of your head, which none of those are actually biblical, but. If you want to do those things, you can go ahead and knock yourself out. I'm not here to judge you. What I'm saying is, don't let these things take the place of faith. 
You see, a lot of believers have done that. A lot of believers have come in and said, you know what? What the real key to understanding is, is if you know the sacred name. Yeah, they wiped that out of the Bible. And back in the 1800s, they, they replaced it with Lord and God. And do you know why they did that? Uh, you're assuming because it was Satan's plan to get the sacred name out of the Bible. Actually, it was because a lot of people thought that the sacred name was actually linked back to a Babylonian god. Most sacred namers will tell you, hey, we have to say the, the sacred name. Ah, yes, the sacred name of, uh, of Y-H-W-H. We can't pronounce it, though. It's probably Yahweh, or maybe Yahweh. Maybe Yui, Ya. Well, <clears throat> let's settle for Elohim, because we don't want to use those pagan names. We'll just call we'll just call the divine and almighty Elohim, even though Elohim is actually plural, meaning the mighty ones. And El, when it's singular, well, El was actually a Canaanite deity that predates. Oh, never mind. Okay, because the truth is, if you want to find pagan origins of Christianity, you can find a lot of them. But go back further, because you can find some pagan origins for some of the things in Judaism, too. You see, if you try to say, well, this is it. This is the piece to the puzzle that I've been looking for. This is what I can put my hope in. If it's not faith, it doesn't work. And basically what it makes you is it makes you feel superior to others, makes you judgmental towards others. And I've seen a lot of Christians who had a good grasp on mercy and love and peace who begin to grasp all of these legalistic things. And pretty soon, they lost their faith. Oh, they were keeping the law, just like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But they had begun to blind themselves to the actual purpose of Christ. So I don't think it's wrong to live through these things. I don't think it's wrong to celebrate these things. We should know about the feast. We should be keeping a Sabbath. We should be doing these things. But at the same time, if they eliminate our faith, if we quit putting our faith in the blood that Jesus shed on the cross, then all of a sudden, those things are becoming a stumbling block. They may be opening our eyes to truth. But are we closing our minds to faith and mercy and the greater things that we should be seeking? Now I looked for a lot of I looked for information on paganized Christianity on the web, and I could find absolutely none. That's part of the reason I made this video, just because I know a lot of people are getting into this stuff and they're 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 it's feeding the bitterness that they already have because somebody hurt them in a church or some pastor said something mean to them, and, and they always wanted to prove everybody wrong, and now it's giving them the information that they need. Great. But it's not feeding their spirit a positive thing. If we could look into these things and check these things out and incorporate them as aspects of who we are in a positive way, that would be wonderful. But a lot of people have a bent, and they're using them as firepower against one another. 